Hello fellow modelers and Warhammer fans! I know, it is not the Bane Blade, but the box size and the kit price are lovely. Yes, it is a badass Land Raider, however, it is a shame that I play for Orcs. The instruction manual has excellent color for drawings, so it is easy to understand and assemble the kit. The box is full of large plastic sprues, unfortunately the parts are large and simplified, so you will have a little work with them. Nothing like 35 scale detail things. The kit is already 24 years old and therefore the quality is not the best. For example, it means that you can see impurities on the surface. The tongue tracks details are not the sharp as we are used to and fitting could be better. Even so, the kit costs around 70 euros, does nothing cheap. I am gluing parts with a super thin glue because it's straightforward to use. As I mentioned, the fitting could be better and filling seam lines with a party is essential. Also, you can notice ugly pronounced ejector pin marks. I am filling them with a party for plastic. Ok, the engine is partly hidden in the interior, however, you can see it through open cargo doors. I decided to install front LEDs and some into the interior. If you have a micro drill bit, then you can carefully remove the plastic on the lights and preserve guards. I am melting plastic dust with a thin glue, it's very aggressive. I am going to replace other lights and sensors with a clear lens, it'll be better than painted imitation. I cannot forget to drill out gun barrels and replace vision ports, I'm going to make new ones from clear plastic. All these small details will make from a toy more decent model. The kit is interesting. The doors are designed to be movable but are hidden inside of the model. Let's make minor improvements. First, I use small magnets and attach them to the edges of the doors. The magnets will hold the doors closed. The outside platform should be glued to the model, but why not to make it movable? I am lazy, so I decided on the first and the most straightforward solution. This is the way. If you have hypodermy needles, then drill hinges through. The hinges on the model are hardly accessible, so remove them. Then it only remains to make a small hole for the needle into the model. It works relatively well. It is again essential to include some magnets which hold the position closed. Now the inside doors are accessible and you can play with them. Whee! I'm spraying on the model grey primer. It will reveal imperfections or dust particles. The model has very rough details. Consequently, I'm using primer in spray cam. It is more pleasant and faster. I want the interior in gunmetal and steel shade. I use AK Extreme Metal paints because they are pre-diluted and dry fast. The engine section has some details, so you can play with paints and spray, for example, burn iron effect. Because it looks cool. The fast engine is red engine.
The funny is purity seal, so for engine blessing. It is a shame that these details will be hidden inside of the model. This detail on the side has perfect size for a small 3mm LED. It will be lovely to have some lights inside of the model. Also, there are some monitors and displays, so I drill them out. You can add new ones from clear plastic sheet. And why not to add more lights? I am creating a display with a plexiglass and white LED on the side. It is okay, but if you want to increase intensity, then glue cell adhesive aluminum foil under and edges. It is important to prevent light from shining where it is undesirable. Therefore, it is good to glue aluminum foil even on the other LEDs. I am fixing LEDs with an ordinary super glue. Behind the engine is a lot of space for rechargeable batteries. This one is single cell LiPo battery. And you must calculate with a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts, not 3.7. And few more lights. Okay, we can close the model. Ah, not so fast. I forgot about the main doors. And they look dull, so I painting at least obstruction stripes. It's time for soldering. I am connecting LEDs to series because I have only low voltage one cell battery. And do not forget to add an adequate resistor for each LED. It suffices 50 ohms for white and 100 ohms for red or green. This is because each color and LED type has different forward voltage. I hope you forgive me my soldering skills. I added a power switch to the second access door. Do not expose wires without isolation, it would cause a short circuit and the battery could explode. Therefore, it is good to use the shrink tubes. Aha, it's working! It is great that there is so much empty space where to hide the wires. And how to make the battery recharge connector accessible? I will make one Tantrax segment removable on magnets. The main cargo doors do not hold in closed position. Therefore, magnets can solve any problem. I attach wooden sticks on the small parts with a super glue for easier manipulation, meanwhile painting. They are again ugly mold lines.
I already saw better kit fitting, but even worse. A little bit of party can save a day and fill ugly seam lines. I use for sanding soft nail files, but on small details is good ordinary sandpaper or metal files. The panel lines are large and deep, so the best way is to restore them with a sharp hobby blade. I could decide on different gun variations and have a flamethrowers on the sides looks deadly. Deadly indeed. I like water-based acrylic paints for paintbrush. If you dilute them properly, then the final result looks nicely smooth. It is important to cover interior before spraying with a black foam. You can use dishwashing sponge instead. There is usually a lot of dust and grease on the surface. And you can nicely clean it with isopropyl alcohol or soapy water. The primer in the spray can is again a more suitable solution. As you can see, it revealed poorly filled seam lines and imperfections on the surface. Ok, now I can decide which Warhammer 40k faction to build. Ultramarine, Blood Angels, Imperial Fists… No, 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 I got it. So let's transfer the Land Raider to Venerable Land Raider for mighty Adeptus Custodes. Ok, let's make the Emperor proud, including Henry Cavill. The Venerable Land Raider has epic red and gold scheme. And if I'm speaking about gold, you can use paint or any gold substitutes. However, the best imitation of a gold is gold. So I purchased a starter goldening set. It includes a special cutting knife, brushes, cutting pad and glue. Last but not least, golden leaves. There are many shades but emperor like purity, so I have a pure natural gold with 24 carats. In my opinion, 24 is suitable for Adeptus Custodes. This is a special slow drying varnish. Available are 3, 5 and 12. The number includes how long you must wait after the varnish application. I have 3, so I must wait at least 3 hours. In the small paper block is 25 golden leaves. They are ultra thin and sticky, so try to avoid touching them with your fingers. I am applying gold on the small part first. I don't want to waste precious material, so I'm cutting it into smaller pieces. I found that this brush is essential for the application. The leaves are very fragile and soft, so you can easily damage them with unsuitable tools. The second soft brush is for smoothing. It nicely pushes the gold on the sticky varnish. I could polish the gold to more shiny and smooth surface, but I was unsuccessful. It is easy to make scratches and reveal base plastic. Even so, the parts are beautifully shiny and have a lovely gold texture even without polishing. I masked red painted areas to prevent applying varnish on them. I am applying varnish only on one side for easier manipulation.
the tank surface is large and I need at least 3 leaves for each side. There is a problem with the sharp edges. You can see the base layer, so covering them with more gold is suitable. And more gold. Do you know what is crazy? So far it is still cheaper than the original Citadel Golden Spray, which cost 20 pounds. With more and more gold I'm becoming more comfortable with this technique and I know what I'm doing a little bit. I used 18 golden leaves in total which cost badly 35 euros. Of course, it depends on the actual gold price on the market. Uh, anyway, it's still cheaper than the Landrader plastic kit. Another alternative is to use metallic leaves similar to the gold but 20 times cheaper. The surface looks excellent, but there are some missed areas that I can nicely unify with a gold paint. Having a gold aquila covered with a real gold is so satisfying, primarily for the Emperor! Now it's time to add small details like twin assault cannons, multi melta or heavy flamers. The surface is lovely but too uniform, in my opinion. Therefore I am painting deep shading and details more pronounced with a dark brown wash. It is good to mix it with a clear varnish for a shiny effect. The gold shade is so tempting and shiny. The more iconic guns for venerable Land Raider are last cannons, but in the kit are only bolters or heavy flamers, so I attach the flamers. It is possible to replace them if it's needed. I am painting details of chrome paint, it will make them more pronounced and primarily the model optically less monolithic. If you remember, I drill out lights and lengths in the video beginning. Now I am covering the holes of a two component epoxy glue. You 
you can change the shade with a transparent paint. The final effect looks like some diamond. Of course you can use real diamonds, but I have already extended the project budget with the gold. So I must acquiesce with a cheaper solution. Ok, and with these details I am done. I expect many people wouldn't understand why making gold tanks, but if you are a Warhammer 40k fan, I hope you will appreciate this mad project. And it is not definitely a waste of gold. Suppose you consider that some people are eating it. And I'm glad that I tested this technique because I can use it even for future models. You can do the same with a silver, aluminum, brass or other metal plates. So this is not only for gold. Ok, that is all for today, thank you for watching and see you next time. Now the Land Raider Revelation.